Well, welcome back to the final session this afternoon in which we continue to look at smart solutions for uh, the shipyard. Um, and this afternoon, we've got uh, in our final session, we've got presentations from firstly from Vitalis and then two of our uh, le leading shipbuilders, C SPAN and Austal. Um, and actually, there's a, a nice little link up between uh, the, the first two presentations this afternoon. Vitalis are going to talk to us about uh, collaborative XR. And um, and then we'll see it put into practice um, uh, because they've been working as they've been working with C-SPAN. But um, so that, that tees up nicely. Um, I'd like to introduce John Maxfield, who is the business development director at, at Vitalis. John is a pioneer in VR and prior to Vitalis was a founder of his own successful VR simulation software business. Um, but he's now going to talk to us about um, how shipbuilders can implement collaborative XR to improve their processes. Over to you, John. All right. Thanks, Tim, and thanks for the introduction. I uh, hope everyone can hear me okay and see me um, and my slides. Um, so, yeah, so as, as Tim said, I'm, I'm John Maxfield. I'm the Business Development Director of Vitalis, and I'm joined today by uh, my colleague, um, uh, Paul McCall. Um, we uh, are here today to talk about the uh, Vitalis Collaboration XR platform. Uh, and how it's already being used and implemented uh, throughout the shipbuilding industry um, to and their supply chains uh, across the whole product life cycle from concept to uh, end of life. Um, later in the presentation, Paul's going to talk about some real examples uh, in how this technology has already been used um, in everyday operations in some of our largest customers. And in fact, as, uh, as Tim alluded, um, uh, in the presentation following this one, uh, C-SPAN will also be talking about um, how they deliver digital assets across their life cycle um, using some of our technology as at the heart of that as well. But before we jump into that, I'd first of all, first of all like to start by exploring some of the key issues um, and how Vitalis are uh, addressing those and delivering real benefit and return on investment in critical activities within um, the business. Um, Oh, sorry, wrong way. <laughs> so I'd just like to start. In a recent study by Gartner, which um, is available online, there's a link to it on this slide here, um, they identified the top trends that concern manufacturing industries as we stand right now. The topics uh, and the topic that came out at the highest level of focus amongst all the senior executives was uh, the uh, process of digital transformation of both products and processes within their own organizations and enterprises and also within their customers and supply chain. And this is reflected in the concerns of many in the industry and typical questions that keep these executives awake at night we've listed here. So such as like, how do I get my product to market faster? How do I accelerate uh, the distributed hybrid workforce that is now commonplace after, after the pandemic. Um, how can I fully engage with my supply chain to deliver uh, a truly agile process? Um, how can I leverage uh, Industry 4.0 technology uh, to the full advantage? So technologies such as the one we're talking about today, XR, but also digital twins, IoT networks, and so on. And how can I keep my distributed teams uh, fully engaged uh, and also keep their skill sets up to date. So all of these challenges require businesses to work effectively in a much more f uh, agile and distributed way. Um, uh, and also, while doing this, they also need to save cost and deliver uh, increasingly sophisticated products in an also increasingly competitive global market. At Vitalis, we deliver a platform that is helping our customers to address these challenges through exploiting the latest advances in XR and cloud-based technology. So let's now take a quick look uh, at exactly how our technology is being used to address these problems. Hopefully this video is, is playing well and uh, it, I've seen a few that have stuttered a little bit, but. Our technology is about delivering an immersive experience where you can actually uh, experience your products at a one-to-one -one scale um, and walk around them, see them, every nut, every bolt, every cable, uh, every pipe in full detail. So you can actually do those design reviews with complex products anytime in the process. 
But you can also quickly create critical training environments as well that can you and scenarios that allow you to then uh, share those across the whole enterprise in a safe um, environment. So you're not away, you're away from those uh, hazardous scenes. And also effortlessly collaborate with everyone on maintenance tasks um, where you might have used, for example, a fully functional virtual prototype or a digital twin. And you can do this from anywhere, anytime, at a click of a button using our, our uh, collaborative XR platform. So at Vitalis, um, we basically, our platform incorporates a lot of our learning and knowledge and expertise that we've acquired over 30 years as a global leader and pioneer in the advanced visualization uh, industry and across many different industry sectors and markets. But particularly, this includes 20 years of, of deploying successful AR, VR, XR solutions in the shipbuilding industry with clients that you will be familiar with, such as uh, C-SPAN, sub 7 BAE Systems, Rolls-Royce, uh, even the Royal Navy. And by deploying our, uh, our platform, our customers are reporting real quantifiable benefits in critical activities across the product life cycle. So let's first uh, take a look at some of these now. I'm gonna start with a collaborative design review. And this is by far our largest use case. This is what most of our customers are, are using technology such as this for. It represents an important activity, as many of you will know, in every product development process and is typically undertaken on a regular basis to identify and resolve issues as early as possible and avoid those costly iterations and delays that are caused when you discover problems really late in the process. Using our platform for collaborative design review, our clients are reporting real quantifiable benefits. So for example, um, clients are reporting they're being able to complete engineering projects up to 45% faster with 40% less cost and even decrease 30 and, and uh, uh, have a 30% decrease in their overall product development time. Now in big industrial complex uh, product engineering, these numbers can result in millions in savings over just single projects. And when spread over multiple projects, this can lead to enormous savings. It's not just the, the direct savings in cost, but there's also increased confidence in the design. So some of our uh, customers have identified that by using the virtual model and in fact, digital twins and virtual prototypes of those models, they can, they can get significant percentages of the design approved up to 67%, sometimes 70%, without the need for physical models. Again, building physical models takes time, costs a lot of money. So you know, this, is, this is a significant saving uh, in terms of the business directly into um, uh, the process. Our second largest case study, uh, or use study, study I should say, is uh, VR training. Uh, many of you will have seen this in various different guises, but to, Effectively, we're talking about replacing traditional physical training or physical based training in a location with a fully immersive, safe, interactive space for learning. And typically the scenarios for this are, you know, training teams um, on new assembly processes or manufacturing processes, or for example, training them on new maintenance tasks, or even uh, training customers on standard operating procedures for new equipment. Uh, or, uh, for example, in safety, uh, health and safety uh, training as well, all within a safe, hazard-free and low-cost environment. Now, in terms of benefits, our customers have found that using these VR training environments, trainees can significantly improve retention and acquire knowledge of complex processes up to 40% faster uh, than using traditional methods leading to significant reductions in the training time, training cost, and also using our platform, able to distribute those training programs, those training scenarios quickly and easily across the organization, 
and deliver them down to where they're needed rather than having people come to a training center we can deliver that training out to the enterprise now in a in a in a, a very flexible and easy way using our cloud based technology The next largest case study, and this is uh, a, a, this is catching up fast on the others, uh, is factory layout planning and digital twins and using VR for that. In this situation, we're using a virtual model um, of a, either a part or entire factory, um, and we create those models so we can test and validate, say, new layouts, uh, the flow of material around the factory, uh, or even replacing out and doing what-if studies on different manufacturing cells, all without disrupting any physical process in the real on the real factory floor. And these models can also be directly connected then into uh, IoT sensors within the factory layouts as well, or or in the uh, on the on the shop floor, to create a living, breathing digital twin of the of the uh, manufacturer of the factory itself. Uh, to support remote monitoring, uh, issue tracking, uh, also change and maintenance planning as well. We've had uh, several customers who are using this technology this way, um, and they create these shared factory layouts and digital twins, and they're able to um, uh, reduce, for example, issues on the shop floor by up to 80%, reduce the time needed to design and adapt new work cells by up to up to. Uh, 25% and leading to uh, up to 50% faster time to market on new products because we can make those changes to the factory quickly and easily and adapt to them. And also, more importantly, resulting in over 70% less injuries on the actual shop floor. And these are significant savings, but also significant benefits to the organization. So clearly, our platform and the evidence we've been seeing over the last few years is that our platform can deliver these huge benefits and support the digital transformation um, of enterprises, allowing them to become more agile uh, while reducing costs. Now, at the heart of this platform, um, at the heart of it is this ability to effortlessly bring together all of the complex products and process data from a huge range of sources across the enterprise and the extended supply chain and bring it all into one place that we like to call the virtual bomb. You'll be familiar with manufacturing bombs, design bombs. This is what we call our V-bomb or the, the virtual bomb. The platform then allows us to uh, uh, support on-demand instant collaboration anywhere, anytime across multiple devices, say smartphones, tablets, even immersive devices like HMDs or large immersive walls. We'll talk about that more in a, in a minute, uh, in a secure, safe platform that's trusted by the enterprise. And this creates what we, what we sometimes class as an enterprise-wide metaverse of large, complex design models, virtual prototypes, digital twins, and a whole range of digital assets that can be kept automatically live and up to date through direct connection back to the original source data, either in the PLM system or within the, the CAD databases where the source data comes from. And these can also be accessible from anywhere within the extended enterprise to support many of those core activities we were just talking about directly um, across the whole product lifecycle, like the design reviews, the training, maintenance, operations, decommissioning, and so forth. So at this stage, I'd, I'd like to now hand over to my colleague, Paul, um, and he's going to talk a bit about the uh, wide range of immersive systems that we uh, produce and we, we, we uh, provide to our clients that the platform that we have can run on and be deployed uh, um, across their organizations. So, um, hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Paul McColl, and thank you, John, for the introduction. Um, I'm the Senior Systems uh, Solutions Expert here uh, with, at Vitalis. I've been with the company over 16 years and have about four or five years experience with VR um, before coming here. So now over 20 years experience in the VR industry. Um, I worked with Vitalis for a number of years as a salesman and now um, I am dedicated to sort of a, an internal uh, customer consultant to try and make sure that our customers get the right solution to match their needs. 
Um, John has quite uh, clearly pointed out why visualization is important in the engineering and enterprise sectors to help us make decisions. And he's outlined some of the benefits that these software solutions can give us. Um, but what I wanted to add in is how do we look at this information? How do we look at this data? So let's move through a couple of examples. Here we have um, our engineer. Our engineer has access to a wide range of systems to look at his data. And he'll use things um, in different ways at different times. Initially, and typically, most of this content is created using, using CAD. And at the design stage of the product, he's building this in CAD, and he's going to review this often personally or perhaps with a colleague um, at his desk in what I would like to call 2.5D, so a 3D content on a flat 2D screen. But he can also use um, an HMD. So... Um, he could put on his HTC Vive or his Oculus Quest <coughs> or his Vario headset and, and review their data um, personally and see that in an immersive environment. He can use the ones to reach out and touch the data and interact with it, and he can check those designs. Now, HMDs are really great tools for personal VR. They're low cost, they're easy to distribute, and they're readily available. However, they're not ideal for group review and they can actually limit your communication somewhat. So because you're isolated from the world, your eyes are covered, your part of your face is covered, your expressions are therefore covered. And um, because we can't read facial expressions, that communication is a little bit more difficult. Not all people like to wear headsets. So what are the alternatives? Well, um, he can uh, move, once he's reviewed it at his desk, he may want to go and review this um, with his design team on a larger scale. That design team may actually be remote. They may be with him in the office or they may be remote. So he could do this using cloud-based visualization tools. So things like Avatar's Reach example um, is a good example of that. And he can share this information, these complex models, with um, a wide range of devices. So whether those are low-cost HMDs or whether it's a tablet PC or even your mobile phone. And he can allow everybody to collaborate and interact with the data. But now we're seeing um, a lot of teams returning to the office. Um, things are changing again. People are coming back to more face-to-face -face communication. We're seeing large-scale systems being... Um, switched back on, being upgraded and being reinvigorated. Uh, and because people are doing this face-to-face, -face, uh, communications can be a little bit more assured. Um, communication can be faster and you can get a very quick idea of what people are thinking by seeing their face. So how do we do that? Well, we can do it on large scale systems. So um, very large screens that present your data at more of a one-to-one -one scale and provide that at one-to-one -one scale for a group of people. So these groups can share in an experience um, across multiple locations. You know, these multiple locations can dial in. Um, so you can have lots of people interacting with a single data set or watching what is happening for that interaction. And we can link them all in real time in 3D VR. So uh, somebody in the laptop can collaborate with somebody in an HMD and they can collaborate with somebody that's on a large scale power wall. And this is all done fully seamlessly. And these systems are really flexible. Don't forget that. They are big display systems. So they can be used for multiple of non-VR uses. So you could double these VR suites up as uh, corporate presentation facilities, uh, customer experience centers, um, technical training facilities, etc. The next step may be the fact that our designer wants uh, to be even more immersive. And he wants to do a trial build of the product that he's designed. Um, or we might want to train somebody to build these um, products. In the image you're seeing here, uh, this system, which is a large-scale wall and floor VR system, it was installed to help people design work cells. 
So because it's a work cell, working with our hands is vital. Line of sight from your eyes through to your hands when you're working at a work cell would put an image on a floor. So a wall and floor adds a great deal of value and allows you to interact with data a little bit more naturally. Um, professional high-end um, optical tracking systems are being used to track head movement, hand movement, um, even finger and body movement. Um, you can even bring tools into these environments and practice using um, your real tools on the virtual product. You could even combine them with headsets so that people in the same room are working in the environment with you. One issue with immersive systems has always been the fact that um, you could only have one tracked user in an environment at a particular time. But now technology has changed. And with the advent of what we call MPOV, so multi-point of view solutions, we solve these problems. In this image, we're seeing three people standing in front of a single screen. Each of those people are individually tracked and have a unique point of view, a unique image that they see on that single screen. So everybody in that scene is seeing a unique system. We can do this with two, three, or even up to six people in the same environment at the same time, each seeing a completely unique point of view. This adds, again, a great deal of value. And these, we're seeing these systems going in in a number of locations. Historically, people have always gone for, uh, have often gone for very high resolution um, immersive systems like caves. Um, this is what a lot of people would consider the, the atypical um, VR solution. Um, however, caves can require um, quite a lot of investment um, because there's multiple sides. They do give amazing immersion. They give a huge pixel density, very high uh, resolution uh, content can be placed in those environments. But they require quite a lot of space. But Technologies have been developing very rapidly, rapidly in the last couple of years, and space requirement um, has reduced very significantly. No longer do we need space to have projectors in the room behind screens and using lots of amounts of um, creating lots of dead space. We are now going to do direct view LED. Uh, and that's here. We're installing direct view LED solutions today. Um, in a number of locations. LED solutions are made up of a number of small tiles. Um, these tiles are combined together uh, to make very large scale systems. So if I quickly show you um, here, we've got a tile. This is one tile from a direct view LED system. And we build these up with lots of different tiles to create the sizes of screens that you're seeing in the image here. Um, these tiles uh, then mount onto a backing plate, so the whole system can be um, only a few centimetres thick. We can effectively hang this on a wall like a large-scale TV. So um, this space issue that we've had with traditional systems has been solved. Um, and also, the brightness issue is solved. So we don't have to have dark rooms. LED has very has a very high level of brightness and great contrast. So we don't suffer, suffer from light pollution. We can run with curtains open, all of the lights on in a room, and still have a very strong image. And ecologically, um, we've got good news as well, because these walls will now last five times the life at least five times the life of any projector. The half-life of a typical LED wall is around 100,000 hours. The full life of a typical laser projector is around 20,000 hours. So systems can be designed and chosen to meet whatever your needs are. We're here to help you pick the right solution. It may not be one solution. It may be a mix of different solutions to allow you to solve the problems that you're seeing or allow you to see the data that you want to see. <clears throat> We're here to help you. So we'd be very happy um, to receive any questions. Um, this is pretty much the end of um, our presentation. 
Uh, I just want to say thank you very much for listening. Um, I'm going to uh, send this, uh, open this back to John. He can take back control. And thank you very much. Okay, thanks, Paul. Um, so I'll just quickly wrap up. I know we're, we're over time now, unfortunately. But um, so, yeah, so this, this kind of finishes our presentation today. I'd just like to say, please come and visit us on our uh, virtual exhibitor channel. If you want to have a one-to-one -one about any of our systems, our platforms, anything else, we're happy to talk to you. Um, but you can also visit our website, go on LinkedIn and so on. Um, so I think that's 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 the end of our presentation. Apologies, we've overrun by uh, half a minute or so. Um, so back to you then, Tim. Not a problem, John. Um, I had I do have one question for you actually. I'd love to know um, what is the, the the sort of the, the most use cases you're seeing from your used customers at the moment. What what's the most popular? Yeah. So um, as I alluded in the in the in the slide there, I think design review is by far our biggest use case. It's where we're seeing the use of VR uh, and XR particularly um, is is the dominant use case. I'd say that amounts for about 50 percent of everything we do um, behind that, I guess, is training around sort of 25, 30 percent. And the rest is around the digital twin and factory layout. But I would point out that the digital twin factory layout side is the one that's growing the fastest. Um, sort of the design review use case has been well established for VR, as has training. But the one that's really picking up now through industry 4.0 and digital twin is that factory layout. And um, that's, I would say, going to overtake some of the others in the ne in the next couple of years. Yeah, wow, got it. That's, and specifically with the next presentation, I think because this is this uh, the hollow ship project that uh, I think C-SPAN are going to talk about is the basis of it is one of these big systems that we have supplied with our platform, and that is creates a sort of core around which all of this can happen in terms of a digital twin of the ships that they build. It's a beautiful, beautiful case study. Uh, well, that segues very nicely, um, John. <laughs> thank you. Um, no Matt's problem. just stuck a, a, a question in, actually. Sure. Um, uh, it, it's, it's a great one. Um, VR is no replacement for engineers skinning their knuckles. So how, how, how should it be used alongside physical training? You know, is, is it, do you look it's, at it's a good point. Um, <clears throat> I think I think where where we want to a standard operating procedure is a is a good one and planning maintenance operations and so on standard operating standard maintenance practice but also pre-training uh, engineers before they go on the manufacturing line for example i mean we're not talking about tacit skills like learning how to weld and things like that it's talking about specific procedures that they need to learn without taking the line down so yeah i mean nothing replaces you know getting your hands dirty and getting in there but um, this this allows those who already have those basic skills and those those raw knuckles to learn a new process or a new manufacturing um, a cell that needs to be injected into the process or a, a new standard operating procedure. So, yeah, I mean, I agree, but uh, they each have their place. <laughs> Wonderful. Great, great answer. And uh, thank you, John and and your um, colleague, you. um, Paul. And we'll um, I'll now leave the session and come back with C-SPAN, who will okay. give us a bit more of an uh, insight into its use. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.